Just let, just let me know when to three, two, one, or or when you're going to three, two, one. Oh no, I already clapped to uh to sync my audio. Oh, but don't we all have to clap so that all our audios? Will I mean, be synced? it would help. Okay, let's we'll 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 do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. I mean, you're just syncing your audio to your own audio. I'm syncing my audio to my audio, and Kyrie can sync her audio to her audio. I uh, we don't need to all sync it up to <laughs> over the Discord. So, that would be. Are you going to sync our audios together? Yeah, that's I always do that. Oh, but don't or, don't you want us to clap at the same time so it'll be easier? That makes it infinitely harder. Cause then I gotta really? then I gotta figure out whose waveform is what and actually is sync it to the appropriate clap sound that happened. So just clap whenever you want. I, I can. It helps. It helps. Uh, whenever. So wait, wait. Your your plan wasn't to just ha to to take my audio and then find out where I clapped and then sync it up to where you clapped. <laughs> no, believe it. Or not. <laughs> That's how I thought this worked. <laughs> this is that, a great bit. <laughs> that, 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 that how this works? No pending. That's not how this works. Is this is this part of the podcast? I haven't clapped yet. It is does absolutely that matter? I can, part of the podcast. I can abso- absolutely. I'm the one editing this. I can do whatever I want. Okay, well, do do you still want me to clap? Please clap. Thank Did you. you. Get that? Thank you. Okay, I got you go. that. Okay, it's uh, <laughs> it's at like two. two I'll, minutes I'll and be six able to see it. In, okay, cool. Hey, Kyrie, well, I don't you... know because my clap doesn't look actually that distinctive in waveform from like my voice. <laughs> so I thought like giving you a time stamp. No, I'm trying to be uh... useful. I'm trying to be a good like like conscious of the fact that you you have to do work, friend. Oh, I appreciate that. Hello, I'm Pendy. Welcome to the Butterball Hotline. I'm just going to go right into my bit. It's fine. It doesn't matter anymore. I'm here today with Master Chef Shattuck Neon. Uh, and today we're he's going to teach us how to how to make a turkey for Thanksgiving America. All right. So first thing you got to do to get a turkey is you got to look outside and you got to spot a bird that is the appropriate size. All right. Yeah, have you have okay. you looked outside? Yes. Kyrie, have you looked outside? No. All right. So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to look outside. Once Kyrie, you've spotted you the bird. Backpack? Wait, what? In in your uh, PNG, are you in a backpack? Yeah. Awesome. I like that. I'm being uh, I'm the backpack healer in Overwatch. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and so I'm in a backpack. <laughs> Oh, that's cute. Because that's what it turns out to be whenever I play. That's <laughs> really cute. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm sorry, Chad. You can please proceed with whatever you say. <laughs> no. I need to hold on a minute. I need to. Uh-huh. We need to bulk it up for a minute. Pending came in here being like, yes. I got a great bit to start us off with, guys. Yes. We can do it. He then yeah. tosses the bit over to me. I'm going through it. And then Pending gets distracted on his own bit. I'm sorry. I was looking at Kyrie's it was, no. PNG and I'm like, it's, it, she's in a backpack. She and was like, indeed. adorable. I, I don't think there's any way better way to bring us back. I think we just need to leave that bit in the trash now. <laughs> yeah. What is uh what what are what is our name again? Unspoken. Welcome back Left everybody unspoken. to Left Unspoken. The yeah. podcast where myself, Shad, Kyrie, and Pending have conversations about random things. It's been a hot minute. Yes. I apologize. Re- well, I mean I don't. Life got in the way. I I feel like it's as much, if not more, my faults than anyone's, <laughs> because Let, we were go- okay. Let's let's go through that for a brief second. So the yes. first time we went to record this podcast, pending on some stuff where we were like, "We'll record the podcast when you get back. It's fine. You can talk about your trip. It'll be great." Yes, that was, that was months a trip that ago happened in the summer. Yes, yes, that was months ago. Then the yes. next time we wanted to record the podcast, I don't remember what happened, but I feel I like had every a, I had an emergency. So I right, 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 right. You I had an emergency. That There's nothing that could happen. Worry about that. It's fine. We had to put it off. Yeah. Like this podcast was so cursed. This specific episode of the podcast is like it was yeah. eternally cursed. Bad yes. things were happening every time we attempted you know what a recording. I think it is? 
You know what I think it is? What? This is our third episode, right? Sorry, I was drinking water. I don't remember. I have no me... idea. I've lost track. Okay, Let me. Well, ch- it's gonna... been months. Let me check. I was going to suggest that maybe, just like Valve, we don't know how to count to three. Oh, boy. Let me... Uh, that... Actually, it's technically our third numbered episode, but we yeah. did have an episode zero. Yes. Well, we could still say that. I mean, like, there's been, like, seven Half-Life games, but no Half-Life 3, so we could still say that. I mean, do people still do that bit, that whole, like, Valve can't count to three? Yes. Okay, cool. There was an entire song people made about that a uh, while back. I wasn't sure because Valve doesn't really make games anymore if people still (laughs) paid attention to that. That, They released a game not too long ago. uh, or It's still technically in beta, I think. Uh, Deadlock, right, Kyrie? You played that one. Oh, did they? Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it good? It's pretty good if you like FPS based like mobile shooter games. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yep. It was so. definitely different. Welcome back to Left Unspoken, everybody. It's yeah. been a hot minute. God, it feels good to be back talking about random nonsense with you two. Yeah. I we didn't have anything that we set up to talk about. Like we scheduled this, we, we never no- really do. It's just no, yeah. yeah. I mean, we had it. We had a topic for the first episode, yeah, and I think Kyrie had an idea for the second. Yeah, and ever since then, the veneer of a plan. Yeah, but hey, luckily for us, since it's been a while, yeah. we have a lot to talk about now. I mean, I don't know if that's true. Yeah, you're right. We have nothing to talk about. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining the uh, Left Unspoken podcast. It was great thank to see you. Guys. you. Um, yeah, good to see you too. And uh, yeah, we'll be we'll we will we'll never be back. I'm uh, we're all graduating. Christmas Day. Shut up. <laughs> Shut your face hole. Christmas Day, Which we're doing one? a live podcast. Yours, oh. you specifically. Well, well, I I guess uh, I guess that beats doing a dead. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say a dead face hole. God damn it. What does that <laughs> even mean? I don't know. Okay. We're we're off to a ravishing good start, everybody. Yes. Uh, well, so you know what? Why don't we start off a little bit wacky, a little bit silly, a little okay. bit out there. Man. You sound like you're trying to peddle something for Carve's improv show. I could all that that is a good idea. Have I you could guys all, seen Carves Improv Show? We're in we're a the, part we're of a it. part of the improv <laughs> show. Wait, you guys are? Wait, what? Yeah. If on okay, some okay, radio no, show. No, okay, here tell we go. About, here's our first me about this. here's our first topic. <laughs> okay. They haven't known we have been going through this. They okay. don't know. So <laughs> to start it off, a little while ago, one of our common friends, Swearin, has yes. a Created a radio, like, radio station yes. where a bunch of YouTubers are doing different things for. And our friend, Carbide, first name Carbide, last name Carbide, has uh, decided he wanted to do an improv show, which me and Shad have been a part of. We are mm-hmm. nine episodes in out of the ten we have planned. Yeah, oh, okay. it's it's something. Nice. Well, that sounds like fun. So that's what we've been doing almost every week since summer started. Uh, yeah, and I have a new podcast so. episode to give her. That <laughs> she's yeah. only had three. I don't know what she's fill, filled that time slot with, but hey. Either way, hey guys, if you're interested in some other just content, a, just produced... an hour of her crying. <laughs> <laughs> Very upset by our <laughs> lack of punctuality. Yeah. But we yes, have ma- we have made a powerful enemy this day. So if you're ever interested in seeing a show by me, me and Kyrie and Carbide or anything else, go check out Virtual On Air. Yeah. That is that is a fun time. Also, I guess I could say that uh that the Anime Night podcast is also there. Hey, yeah. Do you want to yeah. listen to uh, who's on the Anime Night podcast? How me, many advertisements can we fit into one little 10-minute block? Me, Suiren, and Asu. 
Uh, I think. What? I think, you think? like the you last know? one would have been like Alia sometimes speaks in Russian that we reviewed, and then this week. Or the, the next one will be Ranma one half. Hmm. Unless Ranma! they got played in the other order, in which case, reverse that. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's fine. Whatever happened, happened. Okay, I gotta ask. Which Ranma did you watch? Did you watch the, the old Ranma one. or the new, new one? one? The new nice. one. Nice. Yeah. It's, uh, I never watched the old anime, so I don't have a great basis of comparison. Asu watched the old anime, so he could make that comparison. Mm. But I, I did not. Gotcha. Also, also, I gotta ask you too, because maybe you guys know the answer for this, but I don't. So, uh-huh. you have you seen any of Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian or whatever the title is? I have only seen clips of the show. It looks okay. like a very standard rom com where the gimmick is she's Russian. It largely you yes, largely okay. that is correct. Uh, basically, the premise as the title gives away and as you've pretty much summarized is it's a rom-com where she she likes this boy uh it, on the outside she acts rather uh sundere towards him but but she expresses her true feelings in russian and the uh the complication in that is that he speaks conversational Russian, which she does not know. <laughs> oh, what are the so, odds? Well, it does come up later as to why he would speak conversational Russian. Um, but at any rate, uh, so he's in this awkward position where he knows that she likes him, uh, but he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to draw attention to the fact that he knows how to speak Russian. Because at first, it's just, like, he's worried that she'll be embarrassed about it. Because, like, oh, she just said all these... Ab- be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She just said all these embarrassing things right to his face. And, and he'd be like, you know, I can speak Russian. And then and, and then she'd do that thing where her face goes all red. And then she, she has that puff of smoke that comes out. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and, then, and then the series would end because yeah. that, that's our, I- we, we've lost all our gimmicks. As anime characters do, and at this yeah. point, I think it's also the fact that if 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 he admits it now, not only would she be embarrassed, she'd probably be angry at the fact that he allowed this to continue for this long. It's a good bit, though. It is a good bit. It's, it's the, a quality it's, bit. It's the thing that kind of makes the series unique. Like I think, I think. When you have a very well treaded genre like rom com, basically what you do mm-hmm. is you say, "Okay, we're gonna follow the formula. What is the one thing that we can do different that we can advertise that separates us?" So, like, what is the hook of our entire series? What's our elevator pitch? And yeah. that's their elevator pitch in, in a nutshell. It's that's very interesting because. <clears throat> I'm also watching one of the uh, shows this season called uh, Don to Don. And I saw that being advertised on Netflix, but I don't know anything about it. Please, uh, please explain. So big uh, TLDR. Um, mm-hmm. uh, this very nerdy guy and uh, like very outgoing girl uh, have like one conversation. And it turns out they have like what I can only consider as... Um, our level of fucking chemistry where uh at a certain point after they get talking uh he's like oh i believe in aliens she goes ha, aliens don't exist you loser and he <laughs> and uh i'm paraphrasing obviously but um uh then she goes yeah they like the spirits my grandma's the in the occult and he goes ha spirits don't exist you loser and then they get into like the <laughs> The ch- most childish argument ever, where they're like, "Fine, you know what? You go to a ha- you go to a place that's visited by aliens, and I'll go to this spooky tunnel to see if spirits are right, huh?" And it's very much like petty, just petty yeah. back and forth sort of friendship. And I'm just and like, guess, "I'm there's both. I'm all for it, and they're both there." So, 
So, so the have she a, gets like, abducted by aliens, and he gets uh, himself cursed by a spirit. That's hilarious. And their their entire relationship is a lot of just like weird back and forths, and I right. just. I cannot get enough of it because I'm like, this is the sort of shit I'm into. It's not the, like, a couple of teens getting flustered. It's the, oh my god, why are you like this? And it's like, nah, come back here, man. You're great. We're, 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 we're the best of friends. But I hate what you wear. Why are you wearing Crocs with socks? That sort of level. Right. Mm -hmm. It sounds interesting. I don't... I genuinely wonder if I would end up enjoying it because... As a general rule, I don't tend to gravitate towards the shows where characters' friendships are based on mutual hatred. It's not mutual hatred. It's very much like we are where you throw the bagel bit back at me every now and then. Uh, I, see. I would never call it hatred. It's more of just, like, jabs. Right. So they, they just like to tease each other. Yeah, it's, it's very much... Uh, I don't know, they're still, like, from where I am in the anime, they're still, like, getting to know each other, feeling each other out a little bit, but they do have that sort of back and forth. Right. Well, that sounds interesting. It's, it is interesting. I would say it is a fun little show. Mm -hmm. Give it a watch if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Light bit of nudity to watch out for. Little bit of gore. Keep that just in frame. If you right. don't. If you're not comfortable with it, it's the you can you will get pretty much all of that out in the first episode. So I, I don't know if this is just a result of like the animes that we've ended up reviewing for uh for Anime Night podcast, but I've come to the conclusion that basically every anime rom-com has at least some not safe for pending seg segments in it. Yeah. Like, I, I just can't seem to <laughs> avoid that. Like, Watch uh, Dangers in My Heart. Dangers in My Heart? Okay, I'll check that out. Dangerous it's one Dangerous. that me and Alex fell in love with because it's, it's literally like us. Yeah? Yeah. So the, the guy's tiny. Tiny, tiny guy. Ah, uh, this one. Emo uh, has an absolute hatred for the girl because he's falling in love with her. Okay. <laughs> he just He's just like, she's the popular girl. I can't be having this. What's wrong with me? And it shows, like, her, who is this really popular kind of klutzy, ditzy girl who's into modeling. She's really tall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons, like, he, he kind of is like, he grumbles at the beginning for his hatred, but it's actually love the entire time. And right. uh, he uses that as a focus to be like, I want to get rid of her. Uh, <laughs> and the getting rid of her is just him getting closer to her the entire time because mm -hmm. she invades on his private space. He tends to be a loner. I'm going to kick right. this door down whether you like it or not. Get in, nerd. So he's a loner, spends his time in the library, and then she starts to go to the libraries and eat her snacks. Mm -hmm. like on every single break and so he constantly has to deal with her and it's just them getting closer to them falling in love and it's it's just it's super cutesy it sounds really cutesy so it's a pretty wholesome anime i loved it yeah mm -hmm. and alex loved it and it just <laughs> turns into like this little nonsense of what kind of crazy shenanigans are gonna happen this entire time because she's busy she works and she i mean they're like 16 so like right it's it's something when she's working as a model and an actress and stuff like that and mm -hmm. he has to meet the family and things like that's how serious <laughs> this is and oh so yeah it, it's i loved it i loved it so much and there is an anime i may need to start reading because it's well ahead of time so, I hope it gets another season. It's it sounds like it's a lot tamer of a Nagatoro, if either of you have seen that. It is freaking Nagatoro. crazy insane. Nagatoro. Uh, Nagatoro bullies on doesn't do that. 
Gotcha. So it, it's a lot more of a lighthearted version of that. Yeah. But, it's um, very lighthearted. It's very sweet. I mean, the girl's obsessed with snacks, which is funny. So she has a snack in every single comedic output. So, mm -hmm. but it it's positively adorable, and I recommend it highly. One of these days, they'll make another season. <laughs> One of these days, it, it jumped up to like literally when it was airing. It was top of um, the animes for that, like, simulcast season. Oh, okay. So it, it was popular enough to justify it then. Oh, absolutely. It was totally popular. Mm hmm And I know Alex would gush about it nonstop. Like, he still sends me little uh, snippets. Because this is probably, like, a year ago. He sends me little cutouts from the manga of just, like, look, it's us. <laughs> Aww. He relates to the guy in the thing so much because he's a little small king. Right. And that's kind of what this guy feels is he's small king. Mm -hmm. look, look, at, look at his little shorty. <laughs> yeah. His family is also very relatable. And I think that's something like he has an older sister that kind of messes with him oh. and bullies him. And like he's got the mom that's caring and then. You kind of meet An's family, and An's dad is kind of, like, a quiet... He looks like he's super, super tall, so you know where, like, she gets it from. Yeah. But then he's very quiet and stoic, um, but when he doesn't pull his hair back into a bun, because I think he works mm -hmm. as a chef, mm -hmm. it kind of dangles in his face, and he gives off murderish vibes. Right. Until he, like, throws the kid a uh, controller and he's like, you realize he's just an avid gamer. <laughs> the dad's a gamer. <laughs> oh, oh boy. <laughs> Excellent. Though, speaking of gamers and anime, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but, um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, one of my favorite anime that I have been watching this season is a show called uh, Shangri-La Frontier. It is... What I can only describe as, oh my god, finally, something written by someone who plays a video game and enjoys their hobby. What, can you ex explain the premise? So, um, pretty much, uh, the greatest MMO ever made has been released. Okay. Ever. And it's like, and uh, because it's anime, we're using the sort of online thing of, hey, full dive MMO, you're you're in the game. You feel it. It's right there. You, you lie in your bed. You put the headset on and then you just give up for the rest of the day. I suspect you, that you play the part of game. the reason the go that route is it's just, it opens up a lot more narratively. It if, does. If like the character is physically in the game and can feel pain or happiness or like the, the the stakes are so much bigger well either that's that's the funny thing i guess thing. they could feel happiness either way but the pain <laughs> yes oh uh, yes finally my my nerve endings are are here i can feel happy again i mean i've never felt happiness so i've always been interested in a game that would allow me to experience what that is uh unfortunately the technology isn't here yet but <laughs> Someday, I assume, they'll develop a thing that's capable of making me happy. Pending. I I need you to understand. That yeah. delivery on I have never felt happiness was so dry. For a second there, I actually believed it. Yeah, I believed it, right? Like, I was Thank like, you. wait a minute. what? No, he. that's a bit. He's screwing with me. I know the I know the bit. That's a. That was a great delivery on your part. I, I just need to say. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but... I am surrounded, like, there are a lot of people in my family whose sense of humor is extremely dry. Like, the, the like to deliver sarcasm that doesn't sound like sarcasm. I am, I have a, my fair share of dry humor as well. Yeah. So I'm kind of, I've, I've grown accustomed to the idea of deadpan sarcasm where, where you don't at all differentiate how you speak from normal as you deliver your sarcastic lines. That's, it's, that was a really good delivery. Like, <laughs> Thank you. That, that was, that was a very impeccable. Just the 
deadest pan. Yeah, no, I've never felt happiness ever. Yeah, it's a it's a real shame. I've I've heard good things about it. <laughs> I've heard good things about yeah. happiness. Yeah, other either people way, people seem to enjoy it. I, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. know, but it's, a, it's like it's like what I say when people ask me to eat a bagel. Yeah, I mean you should though. You should eat a bagel. I went to a bagel place today. Oh yeah, uh, how was it? It was good. God, Actually, I want a I want a to... cinnamon raisin bagel right now. Oh, that sounds delightful. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have Chad. Yeah. Have you had a muffin? And follow up question: Have you ever had an English muffin? Uh, no, I've never had a muffin, nor have I had any sort of baked good speak to me. So, wait. You, uh, no, I'm fucking with you on that part. Yeah. I have never had an English muffin nor a muffin. Does it? Does a loaf of be bread count as baked good? It must, right? It has to be. It I've never had it. Good. I, ha yeah. I have had a loaf of bread. I have just I never mean, had it speak to me. Right. But have you had a muffin? Not speak no. to you, just to consume it. No, I've never had a muffin. Okay. Or an English muffin. No. Have you had a, ever had Benedict Florentine? I'm sorry, a what? No, obviously not. Yeah. <laughs> have, you ever, have, you ever, Who? have you ever had poached eggs? No. Do you know what a Do you know what a poached egg yeah. is? Actually, are you a fan of eggs in general? Oh, I like I like eggs being mixed into things, but I don't really care for just like a plain old egg. Out of curiosity, what do you have that has eggs mixed into it? Breads. I guess other yeah. baked other baked goods that would have it. I think we put them in hash browns. Uh I don't really I'm not know. entirely sure. I'd have to check the recipe again. But yeah, like a, a lot of baked goods need eggs. Okay. Yeah, no. But that's kind of what you limit it to is a baked good. So you're not actually tasting the egg for the egg part. No, I'm not tasting the egg for the egg part. It's more of what it does to the right. product it's being mixed in so, with. So you wouldn't have like eggs for breakfast? No, I'm more, I just have a bowl of cereal. Okay, okay. All right, that, no, that's fine. Um, no, because I asked because I I had a Benedict Florentine and a Benedict Florentine. Uh, actually, I don't know ex what the exact rules of a Benedict Florentine are, but the way I have it is it's uh, poached eggs with spinach on an English muffin, and it's really really good. Um. I guess you don't like eggs, so I don't know if you'd appreciate it. But it is I mean, really, it's really again, it's not that I don't like a lot of this stuff. It's that uh, like I just don't have it often enough to really have a solid opinion on this Do stuff you in general. Go out for breakfast ever? Because like I assume if no, you went out for, yeah, because if you went out for breakfast, there's no way you have cereal. Yeah, no. Usually, I don't go out for breakfast at all. Yeah. That's a, yeah. That is a foreign concept to me. Huh. Yeah, I mean, breakfast food is so good, though. I, I concur. A lot of breakfast food is very good. Okay. I'm just very boring when it comes to edible. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you I am. Like, um, do you like just plain chicken? Like, I'm not joking right now. Do you like plain chicken? Like, white meat chicken? That's a that's a hard one, because it's like, I do like my spices and stuff on chicken. Oh, uh, you can but put if... spices on it. Sorry, oh, yeah. I guess, uh, I, guess oh, okay. I, so... I said plain, but I, I, I think I, I more meant, like, you know, just... Uh, what do you define like as non-plain chicken? chicken. I you can't have fried chicken. Yeah, like not fried chicken, like boiled, like a boiled chicken uh, breast. Boiled? Don't I boil it. You ruined the chicken. Yeah, never Just really like, had is, boiled is chicken. Is ruining the chicken? Yeah. It can. Realist, you only really want to boil chicken stuff if you're making any sort of broth, I believe. I'd have to defer to Kyrie on that because she knows more about cooking, cooking than I do. But in my bit, you were going to be the master chef. I don't know why you asked me to be the master chef. 
Because you know, you full don't well. know the ingredients. That's the perfect fit. Oh uh, yeah, well, fair enough. And I was gonna, I was gonna say a thing about like how, like you refuse to eat because you don't want food. You don't want the taste of food to d- bias your cooking. <laughs> Like you, you seek the you seek the purest form of food. <laughs> the pure, what? I just go out back and I eat a live hog. No, no, you don't eat anything. I mean, you seek to make the purest food, and if you were to eat food, that would corrupt you and sway <laughs> you away from food in its purest form. What is what is pure food? Is well, it unprepared? Is it just like pull it out of the ground and eat it? Do I crack an egg into my mouth? You know what? I think that's a journey that you have to take. I can't answer these questions for you. You're the one who came up with pure food. No, you came up with it. You're the one seeking pure food. I'm I'm just a guy hosting uh whatever the the show is called, Butterball. All right, what's your interpretation of my interpretation of pure food? Well, I imagine you want to create like the perfect dish that like everyone in the world will enjoy air i don't like air (laughs) well i got bad news for you pending you need it that's unfortunate what do you want to spice up your air oh man could you imagine if you could i'm pretty sure your lungs would have a problem with that yeah imagine if you could breathe salt yeah, I mean, you can. There are just going to be some consequences. In all likelihood, yes. Uh. So back to the ch- to like how I eat chicken. I honestly don't really prefer chicken breast as much as I do dark meat. Okay. Though I will have chicken breast from uh, time to time. If I have the choice, I will always go for dark meat rather than white meat. I'm the same way. I mm-hmm. I like dark meat. I. I, I feel like dark meat just has a bit more of a interesting texture and taste to it I think above it's white meat. Juicier, maybe too. I don't know what it is about dark meat, but I really do like it better than white meat. Um, I'm I'm shrugging. You, there's, uh, I I got nothing. Like, yeah. you, don't ask me. I'm I, don't know. Yeah, I am not I the food scientist. It, I can't put it into words. I do think that white meat is better for you, though. White meat is better for you, yes. Yeah, there's a lot more. F- I, from fatty, what I understand, I there's a lot more fat in uh, dark meat. At yeah, least, I think. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're right. So, like, I could Google this. If you if you want to be healthier, I think like white meat, veggies, fruit, like, like that is like optimal eating. I think, like just just some combination of vegetables, fruit. And white chicken. That sounds like a very boring way to eat. And I know that's rich okay. coming from me. I know that's rich Excuse coming from me. Excuse me? Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> I knew that's that was kind good. of circling back to what I was, why I was asking that is like, you technically could <laughs> have like the optimal diet if you so choose, because you don't care about food anyways. What does it matter to you? I mean, I do kind of care what I put in my body. You put nothing in it! What are you talking about? You completely cut out on Discord for me for that. <laughs> because I'm so angry! <laughs> yeah, Discord says You of all people yeah. cannot talk about, I care what I put in my body. You put nothing. <laughs> you put zero. You've never had zip. a bagel. Nada. Not even one. <laughs> no, I not haven't. even sesame Listen, seed. Listen, I've I've had bread. That's close enough. It's not though. It's it's just not. It's not the same. Not Listen, the same. I've had bread and donuts. I've pretty much had a bagel. <sighs> you just merge those two together. Is okay. shape of the donut, the thing of the bread. It's it's fine. You're, you're aware that there's different types of bread, right? I mean, yeah. Like you wouldn't call you wouldn't call one type of bread the same as another type of bread, right? Like, you no, would, but I call all of them bread. Yeah, but the point is, like, if there is variation in in the flavors and experiences of bread. Imagine how much more variation there is once you turn it into a bagel. 
<laughs> are you t are you telling me there is a massive difference between eating French fries and eating smiley face French fries? It's a bagel. It's not the equivalent of a smiley face French fry. I am absolutely making the equation that you could just have regular bagel bread, just not in the bagel shape. Bagels are so fluffy. At least fresh. So is a pillow. I'm not going to eat that. Why not? Because I need to sleep on the pillow. You can have more than one! <laughs> I'm also not going to sleep on the bagel either. Well, I don't sleep on my bagel. He's just taking the piss out of us right now. <laughs> Absolutely I am. Why do we even do this podcast if this is how he's going to treat us? I don't know. It's, like, it's, seriously. It's a, it's a big mystery. This we is just try to bring gap. enlightenment to yeah. him and he treats us like crap. Yeah. Enlightenment, you say? Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Try a damn bagel. <laughs> I mean, at this point... It's funnier if I don't. Will you do it for sweeps? Who the hell is sweeps? Oh wait, do you not know what uh, what sweeps are? I don't know what sweeps are. Oh okay, I can I can explain this. Okay, please so, do. So, uh, television, especially in classic times, like classic being pre-internet times, made their money predominantly through advertisement. So. Mm -hmm. There was there was a certain time of the year where most of the ad <clears throat> space for shows was sold, and because because that time of the year was so important for negotiating uh, how much a show is worth for advertisers, uh, shows would uh, go out of their way to try to do special things during that time period to drive up ratings to to basically put their best foot forward so that was what sweeps was so like you bring out your special guest or your big event or whatever for sweeps oh yeah. okay I, <clears throat> I don't know how much that matters nowadays i guess it probably still does for television but like everything is that would involve people watching television yeah and, and like a lot of shows are made with streaming in mind now so like a lot more Emphasis put on serialization and making things binge worthy. I mean, not everything. I do enjoy cereal. Hmm. Yeah, that's been apparent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's about. Yes, it has. It's about the only thing that seems to make you happy food wise. <laughs> Just the, the abject pain. I cause people by <laughs> existing is it just warms the cockles of my heart in some way that's just unexplainable. See that? Hearing, hearing just this be all end all statement of like, oh yeah, no, I've never had chocolate. And hearing people go, what is wrong with you? It just mm, warms me, you know? See, this is the problem though. Because now you're basing your identity on denial, and that's preventing you from growth. Because the logical thing to do would be to experience chocolate, but you're now worried that if you experience chocolate, that eats into who you are as a person. I mean, I never said that. It's, I was just saying it's very funny. It's it's the equivalent. It's <clears throat> the equivalent, and this might be a bit too dark, so I apologize. It's the equivalent of like an alcoholic being afraid of giving up drinking because they're like, but people will stop seeing me as a party animal. You have an addiction to not eating chocolate, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I have an addiction. Yes. <laughs> Usually it's an addiction to something. This is a brand new level of addiction. You have the addiction addiction to the absence of something because you base your self-worth on the fact that people know that you, you don't eat chocolate. Man. <laughs> if... <laughs> but what you need to you need what you need to find in your heart is the fact that people will still there'll still be people who love you even after you eat chocolate. So, I want Penny, you. I, I, want I you can't to be know sure that. about that. I want you. To, what if? Yeah. What if? What if once I eat chocolate, everyone just disappears? 
Well, but new people will come. Like, obviously, the people who know you now, they'll hate you. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But 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 they're not real friends anyways, because they're basing their care on you on the fact that you don't eat chocolate. So, of course, they're going to all leave you. Every last but, one of them. Without exception. Then, but you'll then find we can't people. do the podcast anymore. You'll you'll do it with someone else. You'll you'll do it with someone who currently oh, okay. doesn't care okay. for you. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Oh, <laughs> uh, that man, damn. Damn, where, where'd the lights go? It's so dark in here. Oh, uh, so Kyrie, what you been up to since last podcast happened? He started Baldur's Gate 3. We did start Baldur's Gate 3. I got to I know I've know I I've been saying this for a year now. So it's losing a bit of its meaning, but I really got to get and play that game at some point. Maybe you Penny, I'll play with you. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, it's so good. Maybe it'll it's very have good. a good sale for uh, Black Friday. I'm not holding my breath about it, but you never know. Uh, someone bought it for me as a gift for my birthday. Mm. And... Someone bought it for me for Christmas. Yeah. And it's only because I got them a piece of artwork, and they immediately... I guarantee you, that person immediately went to my Steam uh, wish list and was like... God damn it, now I need to get them something in return. <laughs> I understand but yeah, that. Uh, it was given to me for my birthday, and I have been playing it since, and I'm addicted. I have two games playing through currently with another one in the possibility. Mm. <laughs> I haven't even completed chapter one on any of them, and I'm obsessed. Yep. No, I've I've heard I've heard these kinds of things happen. I've heard like there's so much variation in the game that it, it does like warrant multiple thr- playthroughs. Oh god, it is it is you so need, like, insane. Mm. There's like, so much good. Uh, Penning, let me put it like this: every like there are different characters you can choose to pick at the start. You don't need to be a completely custom character. You can choose a pre-existing background. Yeah. But all of those characters, minus one, are also your base party members. Oh, okay. And if you are controlling them, they get a slightly different scenario that you wouldn't see if you were just in the, in the party with Interesting. them. Interesting. So basically, you have the option of either making, like, your OC or playing, like, one of the existing party members. Yeah. Okay. Or you can choose the Dark Urge. What is the, explain this to me. Actually, should, so, I, should you explain it? Is it going to be spoilers? No. Okay. Because, so, the Dark Urge is essentially, you have no memory mm. whatsoever. Um, And the in, there's a lot of stuff that's going to... Go, uh, chapter 1 is all about trying to remember who you are. But you also just get these weird dialogue options that are really murder hobo-y. Oh. Like, for instance, there is a part early on in uh, the regular game where if you are playing any other character and you look at this squirrel, you have a couple dialogue options of being like, hey, talk to the squirrel, see what's going on, and he'll be like, hey, stay away from my uh, some, from my area. Rah, I'm planting nuts here, and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. If you are playing as the Dark Urge, you get no choice. You boot that squirrel into a tree. Aw. That's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate, but then your character goes, just goes, what, what was that? That was, the, the, what What did I just do? So is, I, I don't get it. Is the Dark Urge basically, like, a character that has evil tendencies? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. It is, it, it is an optional character, but funnily enough, they are the only origin character that is fully customizable, and if you do not choose them, they're not in the game. Hmm. So wait, if you... You can make an OC, or you can play the Dark Urge, or is the Dark Urge your, your opportunity to be an OC? So there's two there's two options. There's custom character. Okay. Raw custom, just go in, have fun. Or you can choose the Dark Urge, which essentially has your backstory laid out for you. But you can still customize how they play, how they look, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so you don't have to go with the Dark Urge if you want to like make a custom character. No, and nor would I recommend it, because it's a very different campaign. Right. Okay. 
play it normally first. Yeah. yeah, play it play it normally. You can be the custom character, you can be any of the origin characters. Dark Urge is very much a It's a to put it in perspective, it's sort of a sequel character to the original Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Uh, without okay. having anything to do with Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. I wonder how much time it would take to 100% the game with 100% being defined as getting all the achievements. Let me t let me look at how long to beat. How long to beat Baldur's Gate 3. Let's take a little peek. So, <clears throat> main story. This is just if you're beeline in the main story. Um, yep. 69 hours. Okay. Main story in sides, it says to be like 112 hours. Completionist says to be like 164 hours. I don't think that's anywhere close. It feels too short for the amount of content in Baldur's Gate 3. Right. So you're you're thinking hundreds of hours. I'm thinking a couple hundred hours, especially since I think there's an achievement for beating Honor Mode. Which is the game's hardest difficulty, and if you die at all, we wipe your save. Oh. Yeah, it's a uh, it's Iron Man mode. Right. I'm trying that right now, and uh, oh boy, it's hard. I I take it that you were saying that's like one of the modes you have to do for achievement purposes. I think there's an achievement for beating honor mode. I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. It, um, it wouldn't surprise me if there was. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either. Uh. Let's see. I. Th Think. Yeah. Okay. It looks like there. Uh, there looks to be an honor mode achievement. Okay. Actually, there might be. I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's hard to tell. Either way, if you beat honor mode, you get a golden dice. That's cool. Not physical, digital. But, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It it works. But, but yeah, that's nice that story. is uh, that's Baldur's Gate three in a nutshell. It's a it is a very very good game. I, I highly recommend yes. it, and people have uh, beaten the entire game while using only salami. Yeah, that may, that that checks out. I, I I have heard like nothing but good things about that game. Basically, yeah, it is probably the closest a RPG has gotten to like. Hey, do you think you can do this? You might be able to. Right. <clears throat> there's there's just a lot of stuff you can do in that game. And I'm slowly figuring it out. Like, there is a certain race that you can be or disguise yourself as that can just, like, skip a fuck ton of parts of the, the first act. And it's kind of funny. Mm hmm. But yeah, so that's that's just me doing the that, that's just my experience with Baldur's Gate. Um, I died twice in the exact same spot when I tried to play Honor Mode. Oh yeah, it was it was a time. And, and so like, and so you have to start all the way back. You don't have to, but if you want the rewards, the the challenge is hey, beat the beat the game. One save file, no take backs. Right. Just go. That's it's mm -hmm. kind of like Europa Universalis 4 has that too, has Iron Man mode. Uh, mm -hmm. The difference is in EU4, all the achievements are locked behind Iron Man mode. Like, you can't do achievements without Iron Man mode. That's... That's interesting. The reason why it's that way is because there is so much uh, there's so much in that game that is chance based. Like there's, oh. there's tons of uh, strategy in that game but there's enough R RNG in that game that if you wanted to you could like uh, close your game and reload it and just do that over and over and over again until you get like the best right. possible outcome to a battle or like if you are upset that a country declared war on you you could reload again 
So just yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's understandable. Yeah, that happens a lot. There is mm-hmm. in EU four, I think in part because it's such an old game, a a way around that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you deliberately crash your game, you alt F four. Yes. Yes, if you like, they, that is a very similar thing you can do in Baldur's Gate 3's Iron Man mode, is what yes. I found out. Because it's like, there's nothing the game can do if you like crash bef- or like get rid of the game before you're, it's able to do a save. Like, so you can just be like, all right, let, let's save scum this the only way I know how. The only uh, problem with that is like, hey, you want to save scum it this way? We're going to let you. You're going to have to boot the game up every time to do that. And depending on load yes. times, that can be a lot. Uh, EU4 works out to have the same punishment. In, as, yeah. as a bit of an aside, in EU4, it's called birding. And the reason it's called birding is because there's a extremely popular EU4 streamer who used mm-hmm. to jokingly say, Hey, look at that bird right before he did that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. Hey, look at that bird. Oh no, the game crashed, guys. Yeah. That's crazy. Who would do such a thing? No, I need a new computer so bad. But don't worry, we'll we'll do it this time. It just yeah. all better. Yeah. So so sometimes like mm-hmm. he'll um he'll he'll like put conditions into like his campaigns. Like one of the conditions would be no birding. <laughs> <laughs> or if like he's going for like a very specific thing, he could have like one condition where he's allowed to bird. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Bird only if. Yes. There's a cl- there's just a big uh, if else statement, and then the Twitter logo. Yes. Classic. Classic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, Kyrie just stepped away for a minute well, while waiting for her to get back. I played a little game, uh, game's sequel, that you might be familiar with. Oh, which game? Anyone who remembers episode zero, I talked about a little game called Pathologic. Oh yeah, didn't you say that you didn't want to play the sequel, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly? I said I didn't want to play the sequel until I had finished the other campaign Okay. in Pathologic 1, which was about Artemy Barak. Okay. And... I have since finished that campaign and finished Pathologic 2 as well. Mm. So. On. So, pending. I would describe Pathologic 2 as hey, if you're interested in the setting, the world, whatever, you should play Pathologic 2. You, however, should not play it like I did. How did you play it? So, you know how games have. Difficulty se- settings. I'm familiar with the concept, yes. So, do you um, do you know how games usually have, like, easy mode, normal mode, and hard mode? Mm-hmm. That sort of thing? Just, um... So, what do you think the base mode for Pathologic 2's difficulty is called? I would imagine some variation of normal. So... No, it's, um, where normal is, is, um, I don't remember what it's called, but, uh, we have easy, normal, and intended. Okay, so hard mode is the intended mode, then. Hard mode's the intended mode. Okay. It, um, it was not wrong at placing it there. If you are playing Pathologic 2, do not play intended mode. Play any of the others. The game will make fun of you for it. But dear God, that is that is a more stressful experience than Pathologic One. So, what makes Intended Mode so much harder? Th- they have tweaked all the values to make it that much more like time crunchy. Right. So. It- so, like your hunger bar drains faster, and all this sort of stuff. You don't have a lot of time to sleep. Um. You just never feel like you have enough time for everything. Mm. It's it's a lot of just pain and suffering. But dear God, is that game 
something. I don't know if I would ever describe it as fun, but I definitely found that thing engaging. Well, I mean, that's good in its own way. It is, and... If you're gonna play Pathologic 2, play it on anything other than intended. <laughs> While I was streaming it, I learned that there is, in fact, a harder mode, which the fanbase is uh, lovingly called Double Intended. Good. Uh, did you try out the harder mode? No! No, 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 no. No. Mm -mm. And you, you've done, or you've attempted damage, damageless, what, Elden Ring? Not fully damageless, like, just boss damageless. Right. On a lot of stuff. It was hard, but there's a difference between hard and stressful. What what is, does the line get drawn for you? Time. So it's a time commitment thing that's the difference? It's less of a time commitment thing, and it's... Uh, the uncertainty of the future and knowing that your actions will have far-reaching consequences that you cannot control and the only way to save this town is to uh, use the economy right and you're running out of money, people are dying around you, oh my god, it's going down to he hell and back, what do you mean you got rid of money? <laughs> I see. And that's Pathologic in a nutshell. Yeah. You made it through. And that's before the plague happens. Oh, there's a plague. Oh, yeah, no. So I guess that makes sense with the game called Pathologic. There, in both games, you're dealing with a game called the Sand Pest. Okay. In fact, Pathologic 2 is a retelling of one. Sort of. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be missing out on much if you started with 2, so you're fine. Um, so... In layman's terms, you're coming back from your long ways away. You're an accomplished surgeon. When you get back home, you get jumped by thugs. Right. Um, and uh, after that, you gotta make, make your way back home because your dad called you back. Something bad's happening. Your dad's dead. Oh, that is bad. Your dad's very, very dead. And then uh, you go around and uh, do the classic, no one's telling you shit. Mm. Then the plague happens. And here's the big difference from the two games. Okay. People in the town getting infected is a failure for you not doing the quests. People getting infected in Pathologic 2 is an inevitability that you have to deal with. Like, there's just mechanically no way to prevent it. There are ways to mitigate it. Okay. Because at the end of the day, if someone's in a plague district, and the day ends, you are now putting them on a dice roll, if they get infected or not. Right. And then the next day, they're put on a second dice roll to determine if they die. Okay. You can lose important characters in, I kid you not, two days. Uh, when you say important, do you mean story important? I mean, yes! You can very much lose quest givers and all this, the important people if you do not take care of them. So what happens, like, how does the game adjust if you're missing key, play, key uh, quest givers or whatnot? I don't know, but I didn't want to find out. Uh, but, uh, like, it's apparently possible to beat the game with less people because uh, the ending uh, just has the the stage hands where the NPC would be. Mm. So it, it looks like everyone's possible to be saved, more or less. Okay. That's interesting. But, yeah, no, that, um... Let's just say... Survival games and horror games will never freak me out anymore. I am immune. Even, you, you've been chiseled by... I mean, we can change that. <laughs> you are welcome to try. Deal. I'll I, something. I welcome 
the challenge of making me feel genuine fear for something after this game. So, it's kind of like you had so much spicy food that you're now immune to spicy, is, is how you feel. Yes. Do you feel cursed now because of that? I don't know if I feel cursed, per se, but I definitely feel like something like Silent Hill or any of the horror games will not be able to affect me, just because... As long as I, as long as they are video games that aren't built around long-standing, real problematic choices that I'm making, right. there's nothing the game can throw at me. Big monster, oh yeah, big whoop, fight me, nerd! Oh, he pushed me against the wall. All right, save point. Let's go. That's fine. And that's my journey with Pathologic. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you were able to share. It was, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So what? Yeah. What are you on to now? Now that you you're done with the Pathologic series. So funny you said that, Pending. <sighs> While I was playing through Pathologic Two, the devs announced a little something called Pathologic Three. Do you think? Going back to what you said, do you think they'll be able to make you feel anything? At this point. They'll definitely be able to make me feel things. Yeah. Because, while I won't be scared of surviving, uh, it's going to be a very different game. It's probably going to involve a lot of, uh, social, um, politicking. Right. Because you're no longer playing as the surgeon, you're playing as the city boy. Okay. So, it's going to be something. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah. I look forward to that. Anyway, but I am playing nice things now. Oh, that's good. So, uh, after Pathologic, I was like, I need to play a you more lighthearted game. Yeah. I need a really, really good palate cleanser. Right. After that. So I'm playing um uh this game called Cassette Beasts. What is what is that about? Pokemon. Oh, but not. It's indie game Pokemon. But not being sued. <laughs> yes. Yes, they're the ones that aren't being sued. Uh, I knew there had to be someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's a lot of, like, non-Pokemon creature collectors out there. For Everything from Monster Hunter to a lot of other things has a creature collector. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Cassette Beast is what I can describe as... You are what I wanted out of Pokemon for what the longest time. Right. As long as it's not talking about story. Okay, I, I take that to mean that the story is not really there? It's okay. It's... I've seen it before. It's not really trying to say anything new. Its characters are a little... They're okay. They're not gonna blow my socks off. However, the gameplay... And the environment, and all of it just kind of molds together into like a... Mwah, oh my god, I love this. Mm. So, for those of you who are more familiar with Pokemon, every single fight in Cassette Beasts, minus like, I think a few at the start maybe, are double battles. So there's two people always fighting. Right. Uh, so, but this also opens up the way for a lot of really, really interesting effects that you don't get in Pokemon. For one, you're not limited to four moves. Oh, uh, yeah. You can that... have an entire list. Right, okay. But also, unlike Pokemon, you can sacrifice move spots to put passives in place. So instead of having like, hey, I'm gonna, I have three different versions of punch, I just have one really strong version of punch, and a passive that says, if I get punched, I punch you back. Hmm. And it's, it's really interesting stuff like that, where, um, uh, there's a, like, boss fight, uh, earlier on, which I feel like the, like, the main, quote-unquote, gym leaders, for 
Pokemon analogy, are mostly just people there to show you the unique mechanics and how they work. Because there was this one person fairly early on that uh, their entire thing was, hey, I'm going to explore this one mechanic. And that one mechanic was ghost. And being all spooky. Right. And um, the thing with the ghost mechanic was, hey, you are completely invincible to everything that isn't a ghost or effects. But you will die in three turns when the effect runs out. However, the ally in the fight had this one move, which just made all the effect timers raise. So they were essentially invincible, and you needed to figure out how to deal with that. And I, and I looked at that, and I was like, ooh, there, there's something here. I, I, I like this. And uh, that, that just got my gears turning, and I've been really enjoying it. It's also just a really fun and kind of cutesy creature collector. It's... Uh, it's so much different from Pathologic. It's it's such a nice palette cleanser. Like, I, I usually like games with, like, deep mechanics, but it's like... It, I would say I can enjoy this just on a nice, casual level. It's just kind of fun. Nothing really big or deep about it, and, uh, yeah... Go go uh, go! Give uh, cassette beasts a try if you're interested in that sort of area. Yeah, I can I can see what the appeal of it would be. It it does definitely sound fun. Um, how is it in terms of challenge? Because you mentioned that the gym leaders or the their equivalent to gym leaders kind of sound more like tutorials than true bosses. They're puzzles, right? They're not. I wouldn't call them tutorials as much as I would call them puzzles. Or at least that one felt more puzzly. Um, in terms of challenge, it's hard to say because I feel like I've just been enjoying going around and being in the world and fighting so much that I'm a little bit over leveled for it. And I haven't like I've died a few times, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say every anything really made me like go oh I gotta oh, oh. no it's it's more of a just a comfortable sort of a game with a good difficulty slope. Right. But you also have to remember, I'm probably not the best person to ask about a difficulty slope or anything because I play Dark Souls without getting hit and Pathologic for funsies. Right. Right. Games that shouldn't be played so, like so that. So what you're saying is you're just, you're just too good at video games to really be able to tell if something's difficult or not. No, I just surround myself with uh, difficulty, so my meter is now just screwed. I see, I see. I would never say I'm good at video games. I believe I'm hot dog water. You're, you're like the, you're like if I were to hand a weight to like the world's strongest man and ask them if it's heavy, and, and they're like, I have no concept of what heavy is. I have no, yeah. It's like you just saw someone deadlift 500 pounds, and you handed them like a. Uh, uh, a 50 pound weight and it's like well i mean that, that would be heavy it just depends on your yeah. scale yeah, like to a mere mortal that would be heavy but to a, a higher hercules being, to a hercules like shattuck neon you know it's it's impossible for him, you know? <laughs> yes my rippling gamer muscle yeah, he has he has no concept of weakness Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I have no concept of weakness. Uh, like, he'd say, for, for someone like you, this may be difficult. I have no way of knowing, you know. <laughs> you know, the, I, I understand logically that there's a whole gradient of, like, talent levels at video games. But me at the absolute apex, all I can see is is the white that is me and the, and the darkness that is all of you. <laughs> yeah, my head is in the clouds. If you are not up here, I cannot see yes. you, mere mortal. Yes, I, 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 uh, I barely even look at you as as true sentient beings. <laughs> Let's not get crazy now. Yeah. I need someone to lift up my greatness. Yeah, no. Uh, Kyrie, what what you been up to? You mean besides Baldur's Gate? Besides, yeah, besides our uh, adventure into Baldur's Gate land. In the uh, world I've of Faerun. been reading, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, Apothecary Diaries. Oh, nice, the light nice. novel. They're up to three now. Mm -hmm. So I've just got that. I'm started it. 
very good. Yeah, Apothecary um, Diaries is corrupt, great. I'm corrupting more people into watching it. Excellent. I can't wait for the second season of that to come out, too. Do they have enough material from either the manga or the light novel to adapt? From the light novel? Yeah. Insanely yeah, so. The, the... So okay. to put this into context for you, <clears throat> Shad... The first mm-hmm. 26 episodes covered the first volume of the light novel. You've told me this before, like, and it's still crazy to think I that there think is that much Off the top in of my head, that little I bit. believe there's currently 18 volumes of light novel right now. Okay, so okay. by that, that logic, <laughs> they have enough content at the pace they're going for hundreds of episodes of anime. The manga itself, too, is pretty far along. Yeah. Um, and before the, I'm uh, not the before the manga cut. The, huh? Well, I'm not even to the part in the light novels that the manga has stopped. Okay. Mm, I think the manga is somewhere either in three or four. I'm trying to remember... I haven't reached it yet, but I just yeah. started book three. So what's so, gotcha? I want to ask what's happening in book three, but there's no way to ask that without um, it being spoilers for Shad. <laughs> uh, Sushi's um missing coffin. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Don't worry, I have no idea who that is or what the hell their coffin is doing getting up on its own, but, you know, uh, we'll understand eventually when the anime is adapted. I thought that was, I thought that was, uh, volume two of the light novel. That happens in volume three? No, I was trying to find a key point, because I can't really say too much. Right. Okay. So that was, like, a good key point to be like, there's this that has happened right okay assuming that that um, happened towards the end of volume two wait i mean i could tell you kind of what's happening a little bit that shag would still be confused on could you d- could you just uh dm me the last thing that that you've uh seen in the light novel that's probably better just in case we don't we don't want to spoil any uh potential it, it's listeners it's not a spoiling it's the first new edition of the concubine and the lessons that mau mau starts for all of them oh oh wait no that happened that was also covered in the anime that so they have a no, so the last chapter I read, she got a new shipment of books. Oh, she's and then, she's distributing the books now. Yeah. Okay. And okay. And then the emperor emperor wrote one. Right. And they're passing it around to help the girls learn how to read. Okay. Okay. I okay. So that's like early in volume three, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So reading, how scandalous! I. Th- think if that's it's scandalous by nature of what they're reading i think if that's in volume three then i think the manga is in volume four okay so we should have enough content um so do we know do we and do we know they're gonna turn... go on with the manga regardless of what the manga cut so is doing. The yeah i mean absolutely is i believe actually I, I can't remember i know the manga is being written by the same person that does the light novel i don't know if the anime episodes are being like technically there's no reason why the anime can't go ahead of the manga because like they still have the source they just have to make their own visuals at that point they wouldn't be having having any uh manga panels to uh base the um yeah visuals off of yeah 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 they they wouldn't have like that to use as storyboards, yes. But they could still do it, like, <clears throat> just going off of what the the light novel says. Because, like, a lot of times when, like, an anime resorts to filler to let a manga catch up, it's usually when the mm-hmm. manga is the original source. Like, in the case of Dragon Ball or, or Naruto, like, those, are, those yeah. are ones that didn't have a light novel adapted to a manga. It started life as a manga. Yes. Um... 
So yeah, I mean, so I, I don't think Apothecary Diary would have any need to do filler unless, like, the anime either wanted to make, like, a low-budget episode or wanted to explore something of its own just for the you, fun of it. You don't really see too much filler anymore in a lot of anime coming you out, really I've found. Don't. And I think part of the reason for that mm. is because it used to be that the standard is for the big animes... There'd be an episode every week, nonstop. Like, and, and nowadays it feels like an anime runs either a thirteen episode run or a twenty six episode run, and even if it's popular, it then goes on hiatus for like half a year before coming back. Yeah. So there's no real mm -hmm. need for it because the the hiatus is happening where the filler would have used to take place. Yeah. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's a matter of like them deciding to release more different shows or if it's a scaling back of how many how many episodes of animation are being put out like on a annual basis i imagine it may have something to do with like <laughs> anime aficionados you're gonna have a lot more insight on this than we are mm. we're just spitballing here but i imagine it has would also have something to do with um uh, them giving time for the source material to advance. Apothecary Diaries notwithstanding, they have a lot of source material. But um, anime tends to come out, uh, be made and come out fairly quickly. It's not like the game dev cycle where it's years in development. Usually uh, pre-production, or at least from what I've heard, pre-production and like to, scr uh, to screen is isn't that long that would make in sense a lot of, uh, like places. it would have to be relatively quickly if if like the old production schedule was like literally an episode every week like you can't have mm -hmm. you can't have much um space in, in that scenario but but i i guess what i'm asking is less like that and more like why go the route of taking a hiatus instead of the old route of taking filler? Like, I'm wondering... License? Uh, maybe, maybe it's uh, that they're taking on so many jobs, uh, like, a year in advance that, that it's just on the schedule. Yeah, like, maybe. Or, or or maybe it's just that there's less anime episodes coming out now than they're used to. I don't know which is the which is the reality of the situation, because I, I don't... Yeah, no, I'm... Uh, there is also so much else going on with the anime industry as a whole, it's hard to tell a lot of stuff. Right. Because I've, I've heard stories coming out where it's like, yeah, no, uh, the anime industry isn't doing well at all in terms of a lot of places. What's, uh, what's ailing it? Um... Are you familiar with a release of a little anime called Astro Boy? Yeah. So, at least in regards to a YouTube video I watched, uh, it was described that um, Astro Boy's creation cycle was really bad for everyone involved, but they, but the creator wanted to get it out there. A lot, so they managed to take a loss on Astro Boy. Unfortunately, that kind of set a precedent for the rest of the industry going forward, and it hasn't really changed to this day. So, so studios take a loss on the animes that they're making. Yeah, well, I don't know if the studios are taking a loss as much as, like, the publisher might be, or the IP holder... Someone is taking a loss on the anime production to sell the manga or source material or products. Okay. So, so let's say it's the, let's say it's the... Just to be, for, just to be fair, I'm parroting this. I don't know the exact uh, specifi specificity on right. this. Uh, go look on let me see if i can find the video while you ask your question yeah because i i can look into it a, a little bit and and kind of get more insight because i i do understand the idea of like potentially selling um selling like a a product for less hoping to get uh increased manga sales or something it's kind of 
the same uh, logic that, say, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the, the old 80s slash 90 can cartoon, yeah. existed to pedal um, action figures. Like, the action figures yeah. were the thing that there's, got, I mean, like, there, there's more to it you know. than that. Apparently, like, the work culture in anime creation is just not great. Yeah, that's... Uh, if you heard about, like, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 was having a lot of problems with uh, their animation staff getting overworked. Right. Um, it's it's a lot of that in the industry, and it's it's kind of on a downward spiral, uh, it seems. I can't really find the video I'm uh, hmm. looking for. Uh, I'd have to figure it out somewhere. I'm not entirely sure. But, um... Uh, yeah. It might be a video. Let me let me read through a little bit of. Uh, it might be the a video from uh, Hitreg called "This Anime Exposed a." Uh, no, no, it, I don't think it's this one, but there is a still a very good video by Hitreg called "This Anime Exposed a Twenty Eight trillion dollar sweatshop i think but um either way there is a lot just in the animation industry itself right that need i would argue needs to change but it's gonna take a lot more than consumer power to do any of that right it's probably gonna need like government intervention but either way, that the topics for a much more knowledgeable podcast yeah. than uh, three goobers talk about the media they enjoy. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm not really in a position to comment on it because I, I know nothing about it. Even then, I know barely enough about it other than the fact that it's like, hey, check out like better sources than me. Right, yeah. Yeah, so that's my nickel on the subject right now mm -hmm. anybody got any lighthearted topics we can bounce off of uh i mean I, i've been playing civilization 5 recently i've gotten really into that uh how many countries have you taken over technically two <laughs> i've conquered the entirety of rome and egypt uh, the thing is, I've eaten a lot of other countries, but not all the way. Um, <laughs> like, for example, I have one of Attila the Hun city. I got Tokyo from America. Japan no longer exists because America conquered them. I don't know... Or, sorry, not Tokyo, Kyoto. Kyoto was the city I got from America. And Kyoto would... <laughs> have been Japan's capital in this game. So I don't know if I now own all that remains of Japan or if America is still holding on to some Japanese cities. That's th that's just something I'm unaware of. Uh, I have uh, I have my favorite my favorite lighthearted topic hostile yeah, takeover. I have some, well, in my defense the four different nations declared war on me at the same time uh the lost <laughs> the lost because they're bad at the game like <laughs> so basically what happened is egypt denmark america and arabia all declared war on me at the same time mm -hmm. in the game there are essentially two major continents uh mm -hmm. egypt and I were on the same continent along with some other nations. The other three nations that declared war on me are on the other continent. So basically, what I was thinking is maybe eventually they would try to naval invade me. They never did that. So I had all this time to conquer Egypt because Egypt was not that strong. And mm -hmm. then... I started doing naval landings of my own. So I naval landed Denmark. Uh, Arabia decided that they wanted out of the war, so they gave me a city to peace out. Uh, <laughs> I, America attempted to attack me. That went badly for them, so then they peaced out and gave me Kyoto. 
Denmark wanted to peace out too, but I was already in the middle of invading their capital, so I waited until I took their capital before I pieced them out as well. So, so yeah, I got I ended up with a bunch of new cities out of it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do now in that game. I'm either going to go for a science victory or a culture victory, I think. But I control now four nations' capitals, so I guess there is a world in which I could go for a domination victory if I care to keep conquering, like, other nations. Pending the conqueror. Yeah. I mean, like, England would be super easy. Barely an inconvenience to take London. So that one I could do really quickly. What a what out of context statements yeah. we have. Hey Kyrie, you got any uh lighthearted topics you can bring to the uh, table? I fed my cat Delta and she's very patient now. Excellent. Nice. Nice. Yeah. She was screaming earlier and that's why I had to go. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. Delta having a little scrim. Delta's been super needy as of late. Understandable. You know, I'm having to do stuff to <laughs> satisfy her. Man, pay attention to me. I'm dying of starvation here. You just ate five seconds ago. Man! Yeah, no, that's cats. She gets mad for three reasons. One, mm -hmm. if I don't feed her on time. Two... If the wifey goes upstairs and leaves her alone. And then three, if I'm not letting her on my lap when she wants to sleep. So, so, so pretty much all the time? Yeah. Gotcha. Delta is needy. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. You have a cat, Bendy? Yeah. Uh, technically, it's not our cat, but it's our cat now. Well, I mean, it's our cat four now. Uh, oh, okay. It was yeah, my yeah. stepsister's cat. Uh, they used to be in Shanghai. Uh, mm -hmm. They came here for a year, and they brought the cat, of course. Mm -hmm. Now they are living in Vietnam, and they right. decided to leave the cat here for the foreseeable future rather than take the cat to Vietnam with them. Understandable. Yeah. So the cat is here. He is lovely. His, his name is Stanley. Um, I'm not a hundred percent clear on how he got that name, but that is his name. He he likes to eat. He'll meow. Most things yeah. do. He'll 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 meow for food. Uh, even when it's not his time to eat, we have to kind of ration out his food slowly over the course of the day because he'll eat too quickly and then he'll throw up and then immediately after throwing up he'll start crying for food again <laughs> yep that's i've delta. emptied my stomach that's master yeah. give me more yeah so so we we like spread out his food like every every like hour or so we'll end up giving him more food which is good in the sense that it means that he doesn't get sick but also it means that he's constantly like asking for food do, do you feed him like dry yeah, food yeah yeah because you could get one of those like automatic feeders for your cat we've discussed this possibility before you uh, can also get yeah, um the slow eating yeah. uh, bowls where it's like a little challenge for them to get their food out we of do it. have one of those bowls that is like intentionally designed to make it harder for the cat to eat so that he'll, he'll slow down a little bit. But even with that, mm -hmm. he manages to eat too quick. So. <laughs> is he just... Is he a vacuum cleaner? A little bit, but I think also he has a sensitive stomach, so that might be... Understandable. Yeah, that might be the other factor in this. <laughs> my stomach says I'm hungry, but my stomach also doesn't like uh, this, so I'm just going to eat. I don't yeah. care what my stomach says. <laughs> Away I go! Mm -hmm. But he's very cute. He he likes being with people. He uh, mm -hmm. he likes receiving pets. Um, 
he, he likes finding new places to sleep, so it's nice. I, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Yeah. Sounds like a, a lovely cat. I've never really had, like, uh, we've, there have always been, like, uh, fur allergies in the house. Right. So I've never really had a big, fuzzy creature. Understandable. Yeah. It's always been more like lizards and uh, things without fur. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so the the closest we came to actually having live animals was when my uh, sibling came over and they brought their um, hairless cats. Oh, okay. The, like uh, coming from a uh, an apartment to a uh, like slightly bigger abode, well, God, they were bouncing off the walls. They were so excited. They had the zoomies. They were going <laughs> crazy. I'm glad they had a good time. mm Hmm. They also really liked the ability to climb upstairs. Oh yeah. They they liked the stairs. You just hear them go. I don't know if my cat likes the stairs. He'll use the stairs, but I don't think he has any particular preference for them. It's more that they can perch up and look down over. Oh yeah. The, uh, the void, their domain. Yeah. Does Delta do a lot of climbing? Uh, when she can, yes. We don't allow her to most of the time, though. (laughs) Don't have a, don't have a little cat tower for her to climb. Actually, no, because she's a really big cat. Right. She's part Mancoon, isn't she? Yeah, so she's a little bit of a more muscular cat. Mm. Mm. So she's got like a tiny little perch that she has. Um, but she likes laying in my spots anyway. Right. <laughs> of course. She likes being in my chair or on top of me or in any of these other places that would be particularly in the way for me, but not out of the way for her. Um, when she does go up and down the stairs, she knows she's not supposed to because that's Anna's dwelling. Ah. Uh-huh. And so she tries to sneak it. Uh-huh. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah, because our cats don't necessarily get along the best. Anna was an outside cat right. and had to defend herself a lot, but she's the clawed. Right. So she had no way to really defend herself, and so she just hisses at every cat that comes by. And... Mm. Uh, in the same aspect, uh, like, Delta is a little too aggressive for a cat. Mm-hmm. Aggressive in what way? Like... She's very forward with what she does. Ah. She's very forward. Gotcha. She's a little bit no nonsense, sort of like, "Hey, this is like, I I will scream and you will feed me. This is how we're doing it." That sort of deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else do we have? Hmm. I am officially actually this week. Good depending on when you put Sunday in the week. I'm going to be doing my first ever session of uh, game mastering for Pathfinder. Oh, yeah. You excited about that? It's a l- I'm a little nervous mm-hmm. just going into it. Like, I'm, I'm rolling the uh, adventure path. I'm uh, rolling a, a adventure path called Bloodlords, for anyone who's familiar with that sort okay. of thing. Um, it's an evil campaign. Got, got a lot of other just like evil characters. We've got a vampire. Two people are playing skeletons. <laughs> um, and we have a vampire, two skeletons, and a mummy, and that's our party. Right. Um, and we're gonna be doing that this Sunday, I think. Whenever, whenever we're doing it, it it's our usual time. But yeah. It's uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm a little nervous to do it because I've never actually GM'd before. So, fingers crossed that 
anything that goes wrong doesn't immediately blow up. Well, uh, best of luck. I'd, I, I'd say that I'm sure it's going to go fine, but uh, knowing some of the party members you have, <laughs> hey, hey, I am I'm in control. It's whatever they decide to do that's going to blow up in their face. Right. And Yui isn't the healer. Oh, well that that's good. Who's the healer? I think it's Trell. Well. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I've never seen Trell heal, so You've also never seen Yui heal. Yeah, that's true. I've seen her heal. Yeah. But you can't prove yeah. that. You're, you're just taking my I word mean, for she it. She said she was a priest. I saw no evidence of that. But <laughs> I mean, speaking of D&D &D campaigns, we finished chapter one of ours. We did! And hey, if you guys want to see all of us go through chapter one of uh, Witchlight Wonder, you can go check out Kyrie's channel. It's uh, It's there, right? It's most of it's there. Most of it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been a lot of fun. But yeah. It's been a lot of fun. I had a great time, especially on that final session. <laughs> you are causing several people to have mental breakdowns. <laughs> I'm having... I am the only... I think I'm the only, like, outright malicious character in the party of do-gooders. Uh-huh. But the funniest thing is, I'm doing a lot of the talking to progress, so they're just going along with what I'm saying, and it's like, well, one of you guys is going to have to step up sooner or later, or I'm just going to keep having things go my way. Oh, oh, oh. it'll be great. Pending, uh, how, did, how did you take Shad's actions in game last time? For those of you who don't know, Shad made a deal uh, with two <laughs> people who own the carnival. And assign their souls away for all eternity. Yeah! I got their souls, baby! It was great! So I, th I think uh. I've been largely in the mindset that I am, uh, as Rinka, somewhat separate from all of that. Like, Rinka is kind of <laughs> mentally just... detached from what is happening around her. You don't understand the concept of a soul, therefore you cannot judge. Yeah. Like, Rika is is trying her best to, like, contextualize the things that she does not understand into things she does understand. Yeah. M meanwhile, well, maybe... fucking uh, Contract Dealer D, the character I play, well, is playing 5D chess. Maybe with breakdown, Rinka can come to understand, like, it's a very, very, very <laughs> bad contract. Oh, boy, I'm gonna look Lup Lupin's forward just to like, that. Lupin has, like, so the hero mentality, and he just watched... And did not stop Shad from doing this, like, <laughs> thing. Oh. And he's about to have a mental breakdown. Oh, really? So you're going to have to console his a bunny. His character is for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put that in you're, perspective. You're going to have to console a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Rika, man. Rika I is, <laughs> no, wait. is the ideal choice for that. <laughs> Rink, yes, Miss Coffee is yeah. the... Uh, is going to be is going to be doing the consoling. Oh, I'm just, I don't know what about uh D&D &D or like any of these role playing games that really gets me, but god, I just love playing a bastard. Yeah. No, I can understand. It, I can understand that. It's just kind of fun. Like, I know I can't always, like, get away with all the evil sort of schemes and all this sort of thing, but actually just being able to play a malicious little shit just feels good. Well, was, I, I love doing it. It was a nice way to kind of go about that entire situation because no one was really... And I said this a couple times, and it's partially because we play so late at night, people get tired very quickly. Mm -hmm. But people run out of steam very early on and don't want to talk. They just want to kind of listen. Well, yeah. Shad's gung-ho. Shad oh, will always want to talk. 
I am so gung ho. Lupin has said it before that they get tired and like it's hard to like process. But I'm like, if you guys had asked the right questions, if you guys have spent the time to like really dig into like what Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, they would have told you stuff without the need of a contract. Without the need for Shad to do all of this. But because they were things that were dropped so quickly, the binding of a contract is the only way they can guarantee that they get to keep their carnival. Oh, absolutely. It it just feels really fun to be the threat. Mm -hmm. Of like, hey, we're going on this adventure. We're doing great. Hey, if you guys aren't paying attention, D is going to get his little fingers in there, and who knows what's going to come out of that. Probably nothing good. Well, it's also, you're also working for Vecna, which, mm-hmm. if you don't know D&D lore, Vecna is the Lich Lord. <laughs> so, <laughs> he he can use a good collection of souls, and Shad is definitely doing his part to be the evil little character he always wanted to be. Oh, it's so good. And I think it hurts more because I think Carve and uh, Lupin and probably uh, Rafunk too and possibly probably Lyrinka um, Mm. all have a kind of heroism about them. And then you very clearly are not. And it's a very, like, apparent contrast. Yeah. Oh, it's it's such a really fun contract. It's like I'm full of a, to put it in Baldur's Gate perspective, it's like the entire party is full of Carlac, Gales, and uh, Wills, where they're on the good end of the spectrum. And then I'm just Asterian being like, we should stab him! We should stab him so bad! Well, I, I tend to think if I could put it in terms of Dragon Ball Z abridged. I don't know how if you're familiar with DBZA uh, Kyrie. Yeah, I, am. I kind of look at Rinka and contract dealer uh, as having a kind of a Goku Frieza dynamic, where like Frieza, <laughs> where like you're trying to be witty and evil and. Like Rinka is just not picking up what you're putting down, like, like she yeah. just she doesn't. I d- I do that. my taxes one leg yeah. at a time. How do you function? <laughs> like she just doesn't understand that you are evil. Yeah, yeah, I am the most like malicious person within a tri-state area, yeah. and Rinka's just like, but he's just a cute kitty. Yeah. This is fine. He's just a just a, just a dog I, I man. Think also, like I've been kind of thinking of like how is Rinka processing this? I think Rinka is also partially of the belief that this is a dream. This is a, a weird dream. She's <laughs> this is yeah. not real. I'm gonna wake up eventually. I am. I, I might be in a coma somewhere, but I'll yeah. wake up eventually. So she's, she's being extremely just kind of like rolling with what's happening Mm -hmm. so yeah i i personally cannot wait to get back to that campaign just because of how much i've enjoyed uh like being the little shit of the group yeah i've i've enjoyed it too i do worry a little that i'm not doing enough to differentiate Rinka and and the character of Pending. Um, I mean, you don't really have to. Yeah. Like, I don't know much about Rinka, but I'm loving the coffee-obsessed young girl that's wandering around with a group of animals <laughs> at, like, a Disney princess. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's like... You never know what's going to happen because Charlie's about to jump into the mix, too. Mm. Also, yeah. I... Oh, and... sorry, go on. No, no, I was just going to be like, and who knows what chaos is going to stem from yes. that. Absolutely, I'm also yeah. looking to finally have a combat so that I can start using some of my homebrew brew, uh, spells and stuff. <laughs> the yes. homebrew coffee-based abilities. Combat is going to be... 
a very set thing now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, they had a little bit of combat one of the days that you weren't available to play. Was because the Jabberwock was a, a kind of makeshift fight. What, did did Rinka participate in that fight? Uh, no, that was when Rinka was lost. Okay, okay. You instead yeah. were in a coffee competition. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, but I mean, you placed in the coffee competition and got a coffee yeah. plant, so. <laughs> hey, there you go. Yeah, I, got, I got a coffee plant, I got a bag of holding. Mm-hmm. Is... So, we, we make it up. We make yeah. it up. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, they got to fight, uh, quote-unquote Jabberwocky. Um, but that was quote unquote, uh, a clown in a cardboard outfit. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a very interesting mock battle. It was mock in the way that they, there's items got replaced with like toy swords and stuff like that. Yeah. And it, it was very amusing. You had to play up the crowd and stuff. It was part of Palasha's play. Mm hmm. So it, it was, was very nice. it, it was definitely a very interesting sort of uh, deal. It's like uh, I uh, I kind I really did enjoy running around that sort of like first area because it was really like very role play heavy. And that, that sort of felt like my element, just getting in there, being uh, and uh, doing that sort of thing. I kind of really like the role play element of uh, tabletop RPGs. It feels like I'm I'm a lot more free to do little shit things or play or play the character. Right. Yeah, mm. but there I've, will uh... be a lot more fighting soon enough. Mm. Yeah, because cool. now you've entered the Feywild and things aren't kind to you since the Feywild has changed. Right, it's mm -hmm. no longer the Prismere that people talk about and like heap compliments on and talk about you know it's the birthplace of wishes for mortals yeah it is it's very very spooky yeah kind of and hey if you guys want to see that be sure to keep following uh, all of our social medias that are probably linked in the description somewhere because for for more uh shenaniganery in in that because all of us are uh, in there Kyrie is yeah. the dm yeah, the dungeon mistress. <laughs> but yeah, that's a... I will say I very, very much just have been having a lot of fun with that yes, campaign. Yes, I'm glad. So, uh, you've been doing yeah. a great job. Thank you. It is my first time, and I am pretty proud I of it. Love, uh, I love when you had us roll for, I think it was like an intelligence check or something. And then when someone finally passed the intelligence check, you, you just say uh, something along the lines of, you remember the DM telling you that this was a cardboard cutout? <laughs> <laughs> yes! No! Uh, the, the statue! Yeah, the statue. It's like, we were... There was a large point of us just going off on this statue, thinking it was the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> And it was just a wooden statue. Yeah. And, and they were just, like, so oblivious to it. They were like, oh, it's this very arcane witch that is known for all these evil deeds. It's just like, you guys are idiots. <laughs> it was so good. I think it was, like, Refunk that got it after, like, everybody rolled. And I made it, like, so low, but everybody rolled, like, crap yeah. that day. Yeah, it was a bad yeah, rolling day. Like, I, like, there was a lot of sevens on the board. I'm like, I just need someone to hit a double digit. Come yeah. on. Please! I beg you! But I'm just like, yeah, uh, I'm going to break fourth wall for this one, you guys. Yeah, understandable. The dungeon master told you five minutes yeah. ago that, in fact, it was a rock. <laughs> you dumbasses. The, the, amount of, the amount of laughter that came from that was yeah. it was It was a very good set, what yes. can I say? I'm very interested. So, uh, well. We need more little elements for that. We do. Mm-hmm. 
soon. We're nearing the end. Is there any uh, quick little stories y'all would like to get in before um, we finish? It's holiday season. Yep. So we don't know when this next one's going to be yeah. filmed. We don't, well, yeah, we actually, do. Actually, I'm glad that you brought that up because uh, I don't have a story, but Shad, I was hoping that in excruciating detail, you could tell us what's happening in the next episode of Unspoken. Well, you see, in the next episode of Unspoken, we're doing... Uh -huh. No, 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 I want you to make up stuff. And that way we can clip back to it for the bit for next time. Yeah. I don't think you're allowed to say that, but okay. <sighs> wow. wow. And then, pen and then wow. pending ate a basketball. Yeah, no, that did happen. What? Yeah, that, that yeah. will happen. Oh, oh right, that, that will happen. Pending, it's just going to be a basketball donut, yeah. okay? How Shad can you, wouldn't have wait, had one of those. Wait, how can you... you eat a ba Thank you guys for how coming to Left Unspoken, and, and I hope you guys had a great time listening to us. Uh, I was joined here by Kyrie and Shattuck Neon. Uh, you can view all their socials and stuff in the description. And yeah, we'll be back soon with another episode of Left Unspoken. We're not going to do another several month hiatus this time. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Hey guys, now's the time I tell you I'm going out of the country for like two months at the beginning of next year, right? Uh, <laughs> I can't tell if that's a serious uh, thing or not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs>